Why, hello everyone, this is your favorite Snail Boy, and today we're doing another campaign trail video. This time, doing the 2016 4 Way mod. So, in this timeline, Ruby, Rubio get instead of Donald Trump getting the GOP nomination, Rubio is the one who gets the nomination, and Trump, being the spiteful man he is, deciding to go as a third party candidate, saying that the nomination was stolen from him. On the other side of the aisle, after, after Clinton won her nomination in the Democratic Party, leaked emails showed collaboration between the DNC and the Clinton campaign, which caused the runner-up, in this case Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders, to run as a fourth party candidate, I guess? And we'll just call him a second third party candidate, we'll just run with it. <laughs> so, currently, the you can, you can play as Clinton, Rubio, and Trump, but not yet Sanders. So for this one, we're gonna do Donald Trump. Yeah, Donald Trump. As you know, after he started his campaign by famously going down the escalator at Trump Tower. And uh, after that, he's he's seeking a third party run for the presidency after Rubio winning the nomination, thanks to some endorsements from Kasich, Ted Cruz, and a win in California. Let's, let's get into this. Oh, in fact, he also ran, for, he actually did run for, for, as a third party candidate in 2000, as the third party, as running for the nomination of the Reform Party, but as you know, uh, yeah, he lost to Pat Buchanan, so, yeah. And here he has a choice, he has uh, four running mates, Ben Carson, a neurosurgeon from Michigan, U.S. Senator Jeff Sessions from Alabama, Former Alaska Governor and VP to McCain's ticket in 2008, Sarah Palin. And, uh, he retired Art Lieutenant General and former Democrat, Michael Flynn from Rhode Island. Just for the fun of it, we're gonna go to the, for the most Trumpy clone being Palin. And since this is, we're running as a third party, and we're gonna, we're gonna charge it up a bit. Very easy mode. Let's do it. Alright. Uh, it's the night of the final Republican primaries. As you frantically ask for campaign updates from your staff, a nearby television gives you the news. Marco Rubio has carried the state of California, and with it, the Republican nomination. Before the night is out, you and Bannon have already decided that a third-party candidacy is the only way forward. What's the plan? Well, we're going to try to split the Trump campaign into two sections. One that does all the paperwork, but one just does all the fancy, sm fancy, schmancy events. Steve can do all the paperwork, and I'll do my usual routine. We can't stop the rallies. We can. We build up to it. In fact, because I'm the Republican nominee, we'll say I'm the Republican nominee, and I'll be on the ballot in November. Oh, and it's really the, it's really quite true. Obviously, the constituency that thinks you're actually the Republican nominee in any sense is hardly real. But this strategy certainly keeps the energy head, uh, up ahead of your announcement. The first, the first immediately obvious problem for your, camp, for your fledgling third-party candidacy is ballot access. Most of your campaign infrastructure from the grueling and lengthy primary is still in place. Although the campaign was also quite costly with waning legal resources, how do you want to be an option in the ballot come November? Of course, trying to get secure everything on the, on the nomination, we're just gonna we're just gonna run smaller. These smaller parties have been wanting a chance at this for years. These reform guys, Ross Perot, they wanted me bad, but I was very busy. Conservative party, Constitution. There are practically a million of these, but now, we reach out, we use our ballot lines, and we'll be on all 50. It might be confusing to some of your potential voters, and subject to some mockery, but many of these parties are chomping at the bit to work with you, and now you're, you're on the ballot in all 50 states with minimal work. Let's see. Hmm. Let's see, stuff cookie. We got Rubio leading in New Hampshire. Of course, uh, Utah's a no-go for us. And we got the standard Democratic states it's electoral vote. Claim with 339. Let's shove it up to the, to the stupid establishment. Missouri's first on the list. 
Your selection of Sarah Palin has made some headlines. Those tilting towards your campaign love it. Well, Rubio claimed it in a statement that she's been trying to sabotage the Republicans since 2008. How will you talk about your pick? Okay. Alright. Since Trump loves attention, I mean, it's a, he actually does love attention, so... All this coverage. It's a tremendous, tremendous thing. We're going to do this great speech with Sarah. And when we have her up, I mean, we'll just have her go wild. You, you should see how people cheer for her. Palin receives a plethora of media attention as she flings attacks at the rest of the field. And you swear that they're almost more excited for her than for you. In your... Alright, next question. <clears throat> In your first post-announcement interview with uh, Newsmax, you're asked a fairly obvious question. What is your point of, the third, of this third party one? What do you intend to accomplish? Hmm. Let's see. I want to go with this one, to be honest. I'm just going to read it out, but I'm obviously not going to choose it. We're going to show little Marco, Turtle Mitch, Mittens. And this is what happens when you conduct the most clear and obvious deal in the history of America. Right in front of the American people. They want you to lose. They want Crook and Hillary to win. And I'm going to stop them. But obviously that might hurt us because, uh, you know... It's just going to be put up some spiteful campaign by angry orange guy, so. There is a move. So the answer will go is, there is a move in millions of people in this country who want to make this country great like it once was. Like I do. And then you have these two. These candidates, okay? They want millions of illegals. They want to take your money and kick you to the curb. You're running on a deep-seated dissatisfaction with the status quo and resentment with immigration, just like in the primaries. See, nothing changed. Although we did get Utah, which is a good bonus. Oh, look, we're actually tied with with Clinton with electoral votes and uh, a vote, and we are in third place with the popular vote. All right, Georgia's looking nice. So Georgia. Meanwhile, FBI Director James Comey has handed out a severe criticism of Clinton's email practices while Secretary of State, calling on her behavior extremely careless but declined to file any criminal charges. On this more democratic side of things, what do you have to say? Trump has been hitting on Clinton from day one for the FBI sh sh crap, but since it's a four-way race, our so-called FBI has been entirely designed to keep these establishment thugs out of prison. Crook and Hillary desert, destroyed massive amounts of evidence, and yet the Republican Party, our agencies, will keep it free. I don't believe a word what this guy that this guy is saying. Your supporters are certainly convinced of Hillary Clinton's guilt. Guilt, this regardless of what James Comey says. Inspired by your campaign, third-party candidates running against establishment Republicans have received renewed focus from the media. Now that you declared, how will you deal with these candidates? Will you endorse against Republicans down ballot? Hmm. Of course, and this time on Trump's just done with Republicans, so. Why not? Why would I endorse Republicans? Any of these guys who stole it from me, down ballot, I can't trust them. I can't trust their judgment. Look, if you endorse Donald J. Trump, I endorse you. That's how it works. That's how politics works. Republican commentators and politicians alike admonish you supposedly helping Democrats win Congress. But when these are the very same people you're running against, these and these third-party candidates are typically more than happy to get behind you since, you know, we've got to make our parties relevant again. Alright, we're getting close to Missouri. Still chomping on Georgia. Missouri, wing it. Whee! An advisor of yours, George Papadopoulos, however you say his last name, has come forward with campaign GOP chair Sam Clovis about his meetings with a man named Joseph Mis Mifsud who has told him that Russia has thousands of emails from the Clinton and Rubio campaigns. Papadopoulos says that he may be able to meet with agents of the Russian Foreign Ministry to facilitate the release of these emails, and that too, that could get you a meeting with members of the RFM. What do you say? Well, this is obviously illegal to start with, and we're trying to run a clean campaign, so... George, you're fired. I'm not... 
We're not going to work with another government. George, I'm not going to prison, okay? Look, get out of my office. I'm going to disavow this Russian stuff right now. Get him out of here! Papa Lewis is safely out of your campaign, but much of the public is confused about your sudden disavowment delivered on Twitter. They're wondering if you know something they don't. Uh, do, 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 do. There, are, of course, there's the campaign issues we gotta move on to now. There was a mass shooting in an Orlando gay nightclub, perpetrated by Muslim, resulting in 50 people killed. What is your response? No politicization around, so... This is a tremendous tragedy, and my thoughts and prayers go out to everyone affected. This is a safe, standard response to such events, and it keeps media attention off your campaign. We'll take it. Colorado's obviously tight. Uh, everything's staying the same. We're gonna keep pushing for Missouri. Rumors swirl of a Democratic grift after a newly leaked email show collaboration between the, the DNC and the Clinton campaign. Surrogates for Bernie Sanders, who had only narrowly lost, claimed that they might have shifted the race in her favor. What will you say? Okay. Of course, Trump running against the establishment in 16. We're going with... It's a very dirty game. And both of them do it. Rubio and the RNC. Then they took it from me. And they took it from Crazy Bernie, too. They want the Hillary and Rubio ticket. They want the uni party. I never have. Anti-establishment sentiment is at an all-time high. And this type of talk is perfect for taking advantage of that. Nice. More DNC crap. In the aftermath of the D Democratic National Convention, in which the vast majority of Sanders delegates walked out of the convention hall as Hillary spoke, Bernie has made a shocking announcement. He will be running in the can as a candidate in the general, turning this into a four-candidate race. What do you think about all this? Of course, both Trump and Bernie don't agree with much, but they appeal to one type of group, the anti-establishment. The only thing is one is left-wing while one is more right-wing. So, privately, look, look. Bernie could appeal to some of our Ansley establishment guys, who I love. We cannot let them go. We could, I mean, we could say he endorsed Hillary. He did, and then he went back. He said he didn't care about the emails. I, I think he's going to drop back out in a month. It's all a stunt for these new world order guys. Some advisors question this messaging, but there's certainly a sliver of voters who you two both appeal to. See? I had my point. Okay, so we barely got Missouri and Georgia. It doesn't count yet. Let's go with Georgia to secure it. Let's see it. As we march on to the onset of the true campaign season, you have a key choice to make in regard to campaign infrastructure. Is, is there a particular area or state you would prefer to campaign invest in early on in the general? I've seen our numbers are flopping in the Midwest, so... There's this American carnage across the Midwest. Factories are closing. They've been forgotten. And we're going to bring them back, and we're going to say so very strongly. In Wisconsin, in Missouri, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and maybe even, they'll say it's crazy, Minnesota. Oh, no advisor. Let's see, did it work? Eh, I'll take it. We got what we wanted. So, let me fix the feedback twice. Boom. Over the past few months, there has been several notable terrorist attacks, such as the previously mentioned Orlando shooting and a recent truck attack in Nice, Nice, France. France. What do you have to say about this? Uh, and this is a hard one. I mean, uh, I don't really want to. Uh, it it speaks for itself. It really speaks for itself. We're going to talk very strongly about our independence, the corruption, all that stuff. But if people are going to vote for me over this, they'll figure it out themselves. The hard line against immigration and terrorism are your central appeals. And open and openly questions your pivot here. Your independence plays well too. But alongside these issues, not alone. Uh, great. And we lost Georgia. Very fun. John Kasich, Rubio's running mate, was key in his victory over you in the primary, endorsing him before several very important races and enabling Rubio to centralize the field behind him. Accusations have abounded from your supporters in the aftermath. What do you think about all this? 
What do we know? Let's see. Uh, mm, I got it. John Kasich is a political hack who has been in the government since the 70s. We have me. We have the wonderful Sarah. Outsiders. We understand what this country needs. And the, and the and establishment guys like John don't have a clue. Shifting your critique from Kasich to a corrupt bargain accusation to the more and vague insinuations of being a current politician gets your base far less excited comparatively. I mean, it's, I mean, we have to try to keep it up to potentially win the vote, so. Your campaign has been lagging in fun since the primary, and even despite some success in smaller donations. How you plan on acquiring the necessary money needed to run this campaign? Hmm. Let's see. Alright, let's see. All right, the red hat. We love it, don't we? The shirts, the bumpers. I saw these at, at this one rally. They had a flag. Flag with me on it. My supporters. My beautiful supporters. They'll love the merchandise. We'll double down. And really, it's free advertising, too, with many of these guys. There's a few articles out on, the, on your expanded chance to turn things like the red MAGA hat into a brand. And it's quickly becoming a recognizable one. And fans are quickly to buy plenty of campaign merch for themselves. Fundraising issue solved. So we're getting them in Wyoming, got them in Idaho. Big thorny Missouri on my ass. Uh, Colorado too. Your numbers with conservatives are an interesting point with the campaign. How do you tend to differentiate yourself from Rubio's campaign in the eyes of the average Tea Partier? Of course, it's me versus the establishment for the whole primary, the whole thing. You think that these Tea Party guys are going to go with Marco, John Kasich, when we have Sarah? We are obviously strong conservatives, and it speaks for itself. We need to focus on everyone who's against these sickos, these establishment freaks. According to a recent poll, a sizable number of voters think of yourself as more moderate than Rubio. Then that includes ultra-conservatives reluctant of Rubio. This has its benefits and drawbacks with your avoidance of directly targeting conservatives. Yeah, true. Oh, crap, this ain't going well. Which state will we bound to lose? No. Oh, no. The aftermath of Obamacare is a key issue in this race. How do you plan on addressing it? Of course. You gave Paul Ryan in 2010. He said, they said, we'll repeal it, give us the house, we'll repeal it. Didn't do a thing. In 2014, they said, give us the Senate, we need the Senate. Didn't repeal. They are, if little Marco was sent to the White House, he won't, he can't. Donald J. Trump, me, I can, I will. I will repeal and replace. Conservative political sarcastically link to a schoolhouse rock short about the process of Bill becoming a law on Twitter while talking has hit you for your, of your misunderstanding government. This line of thought, of thought is clearly evident to your fan base, though, and that's who matters. True. Okay. So we got Missouri back on our hands. All right, everything's looking good. Let's go to Georgia. The first presidential debate is this week, and in surprise, both you and Sanders have met the necessary 50% threshold needed for, vote, for access. For both Rubio and Hillary have had their team signal some reluctance to participate, including you both. But Bannon is convinced that all is bluff. It's all bluffing. What do you think about this? What is your strategy for the debate? All right, let's do it. This is a tremendous opportunity. I nearly would have did the run that were a Republican nomination, and it's because I told everyone who they really are. Who they really on live TV. We can do the same with Hillary, with Little Marco, and Crazy Bernie. That's headlines. That's clips. Viewers detect somehow a more aggressive and attacking persona from you, even compared to the old GOP debates. Several times, moderator Lester Holt tells you you're out of line, and you dominate the post debate coverage. For better or for worse? And it looks and it's looking like for the worse. Or better, I don't know. Next, we got... Even Hillary Clinton and Marco Rubio have been signaling their opposition to the Trans-Pacific Partnership as of late. And that's an issue that's been quite important for your campaign. What do you have to say? 
All right. I've been saying this for years. Before, really, before NAFTA, was say, I was saying these deals were stealing millions of jobs for us. Before Little Marco and Crooked Hillary Flip Flop. Before, maybe even, before Bernie. I've been very strong on this issue. I'm the only real one here. I guess like that. There you go. Bernie Sanders has been vocally against NAFTA from the start. But it is true that Hillary and even Rubio have pivoted towards protect the protection side of things as of late. Ooh, we gaining momentum. Michigan, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Minnesota. Wow, so it's really looking good. New Mexico is, is a good target, so let's go there. Bernie Sanders has been rising in the polls as of late, regardless of recent attacks against his running mate, uh, Tulsi Gabbard, regarding her association with Hare Krishna. I need to look that up when I'm done with this. How do you want to address to this? Okay. Hmm. Okay. Of course, Trump doesn't want to pay much attention to Bernie since uh, he's a third party candidate as well. So, this election is about me and Rubio and maybe Crooked Hillary. Some communist, I mean. It doesn't matter. He's stealing my votes. We don't care about him. No, we don't care. You don't really need to directly address Bernie, even as some of your fans expect a stronger line from you on the Tulsi situation. If you'd rather just not engage, that's fine. And a recent advertisement. Marco Rubio implied that a Trump presidency would be a disaster for the economy, calling you a con artist who would let the government crumble under your watch, citing your history of bankruptcy. What do you think about all of this? Let's fire back with more economics. Marco Rubio's tax plan would be a complete and total disaster for this country. All these Republicans. And this is why they kicked me out. They just want to cut taxes for people like Hillary Clinton. Not you. They hate you. And I love you. We do it for the beautiful work, for our beautiful, beautiful working class, if you put me in there. Taking a stance against supply side into economics is a surprising move from you. Conservatives are repelled for your position here, but this type of rhetoric has its appeals. Alright, we're keeping it up, taking up good progress. Second place in the popular vote, which I'll gladly take. Uh, uh, let's try aiming for. Uh, New, Me uh, New Mexico again. After months of headlines, your running mate Sarah Palin is set to soon face up against Tim Kaine, John Kasich, and Tulsi Gabbard in the first and only vice presidential debate of the cycle. What's her strategy and ahead of time? Hmm. Of course, Palin has more experience than Trump in politics, so... We're gonna have her do, I mean, really whatever she wants. She understands duck politics a hell of a lot better than anyone, other than maybe myself. She's a genius. We can have her talk. Palin is her usual bombastic self, with pundits covering a few of her gaffes alongside the general attacks on Tulsi Gabbard. But maybe those gaffes aren't so bad if, you, if they keep you on TV. True. As the campaign continues on to October, is there any particular areas you'd like to focus on? Let's check the map first. Mm -hmm. The Midwest seems to be slipping a bit. But I do want to clinch New Mexico. But I doubt it's going to be possible. Uh, we're going to have to go for the Midwest again. Oh, wait, no, that's not an option. Uh, you know what's good? We're going for the Southwest. Wait, where's the Southwest? Okay, screw it, we're just going for the Midwest again. Minnesota. I got great reactions in Minnesota, in Iowa, in Wisconsin. The entire area was very positive. Ohio, they won them. A primary, they won them. But only after some very substantial rigging. We're taking it back. It's true, we lost all these states to Rubio or Cruz in the primaries. Hopefully the general is a different story. And it's looking like we're about to lose Michigan. Uh, great. And Colorado. A recording obtained and published by the Washington Post of you talking about Billy Bush of Access Hollywood shows you describing how you tried to seduce a married woman and how you generally you can generally kiss a woman or grab them by the you know what. Fourteen women have also stepped forward to accuse you of assault. 
What is your response? Insert standard apology. I, I am very sorry for how I acted here. I, I wasn't myself. But look, a conversation from more than a decade ago, and I'm the only candidate who will make this country great. This is the future of America. We have to be smart. This is the kind of thing that ends careers, campaigns, lives. A large portion of your support base is put off, and Rubio wastes no time in saying that you should drop out. In the aftermath of the access Holly could take, your campaign has taken a nosedive, at least in the media narrative. As virtually all your political spectrum outside of your corner have denounced you, and many have called for your withdrawal, for you to withdraw from the race. Yeah, this just pretty much sank our campaign. Uh, no, 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 I was trying to win. Of course, let's fire back at the stupid establishment. I've apologized half a dozen times. What about them? Bill Clinton is a very sick man. He should be in jail, really. And then you have that other guy, Dennis. Dennis Hassert, they call him. Hassert. Speaker of the House, Republicans, Rubio loved him. Child molester. And they love the guy. They defend their own. I'll say that. Standing at the brink. <coughs> You're resolved to take the campaign to an even darker direction. I suppose the race is really in the gutter now. Uh, great. Why did this just have to happen? I mean, of course, it happened in real life. Let's just sell. Let's just try salvaging and going to areas like Wyoming. Your hardline immigration stance has been a centerpiece for your campaign. Now it's a hall debate organized by the by the Presidential Debate Commission. A woman asks you to elaborate. What do you say? Hmm. We're going to build a tremendous wall, and they don't know it yet. But Mexico is going to pay for it. Mexico has exploited our country for 20 years now. Dumping murderers, rapists, and worse onto our system and stealing our jobs with NAFTA. Believe me, that's not going to last. You're clearly continuing your divisive immigration record from the primaries. And your supporters, I can't get enough, while moderates are predictably repelled. Overall, though, most pundits say you had a poor debate in the town hall debate thanks to the access Hollywood took. Okay, we're about to lose even freaking Florida. This is great. This is very, very great. Georgia. That wants they could take me to victory. Oh. Meanwhile, the campaign of Bernie Sanders is rising after key endorsements from several members of Congress. He's gained increased media pro coverage despite attacks from across the board. How do you how do you respond to what is your response to all this? <laughs> wow. They said that we, both of us, had no shot. And now we're both shooting up and the establishment is shooting down. The American people are tired of these establishment thugs. But I'm the one who's going to win. This very setback, there's clearly an anti-establishment tinge to this election. Will you be able to seize it? Great, no Rubio as Georgia. And we're so close to victory. Miss Missouri, screw it. A leaked transfer from WikiLeaks shows come. Clinton saying in a closed door speech that Goldman sucks, that she is uh, center left, center right, and that she supports open trade and open borders. Why do you respond? Okay, let's see. Hmm. This is a disaster, and I'm the only one who can beat Hillary Clinton and keep the candidate of Goldman Sachs and many others out of office. Most disagree, but your base is certainly fired up by your remarks, and united around you as always. Poll check. Yeah. Ooh, right when? Let's go back at it. After more leaks, there has been a renewed focus on the DMT emails that sh wholly changed the state of the race a few months ago. Hillary has claimed that foreign governments have been boosting both Bernie's campaign and yours, while Bernie's surrogates rehashed debate over DNC collaboration. How do you respond? I do wish that if what Hillary's saying is true, that if Russia believes this, that it, they would be impartial and release some of the info about Rubio. Because they have it on both. That would make it fair. Because otherwise they're handing it to Marco. Which would be a very, very sick subversion of democracy. This comes as a bizarre and irrelevant statement. Do you know something we don't? I mean, not really bizarre and irrelevant when you're shooting up. In the polls, that is. James Comey, FBI director, has made a lane announcement that additional emails have surfaced in Hillary Clinton's case thanks to an investigation into Congressman Anthony Weiner. What are your thoughts? Of course, Trump being Trump, 
From the start, it's incredible to how Hillary Clinton was even allowed to run. And we're just fortunate that this news came before the election. Can you imagine? Polls are swinging against Hillary in the sacrament. And this looks like if it, it could totally alter the results of the election. Alright, yep, we're winning big. We've got the electoral vote, se electoral vote sealed. Let's, let's run it. Uh, uh, we have great numbers. Great numbers in Colorado and Nevada. We need to have some very large rallies in these states. The mayor of Las Vegas did give you a soft endorsement a few weeks ago, and now had a brief appearance at your final rally there, before you ran into Colorado and went home to New York. Good luck! Let's go! Let's hope we get this thing. Full closings are going to take forever since, you know, err, four candidates into the race equals utter chaos. <laughs> let's see, let's see, let's see who we're going to get. Let's see, let's see, let's see who we're going to get. So, Vermont goes for Sanders, as expected, and Kentucky goes for Trump. Kentucky goes to Trump by 8, and Vermont goes to Sanders by 27. Nearly 28. Wow. Well, Meanwhile, we got like, all right, more states. Indiana goes for us, goes to us by two and a half. Virginia goes to us by nearly twelve, and South Carolina goes to us by six, about six and a half. Illinois, D.C., uh, Maryland, Delaware, and Virginia, New Jersey are going for Clinton. We got most of the South R reps now. Georgia just went for Rubio. Let's hope we can pull it off. All right, Florida and Wisconsin have gone to us, which is good news. Well, pretty close to New York. Dang it, Missouri's gone for, for Rubio, as well as Utah. Yes, we got Texas on our path. Just gotta give us a couple more states, and then we, and then we got it. Yes, yes. If you give us Idaho, at least I'll be happy. We're so close. We're at 269. Let's go! We've done it! We've done it! Third party victory for the week! Nice. nice. Oops. I forgot that music plays down there, so I won't be able to read what it says because I'm going to get my aunt. Because the stupid music is going gonna, is gonna to play. You know what? Yeah, let me try something. My God, your victory party at the Trump Hotel is shouting. Even the Newsmax anchor can hardly pretend to believe it. A few mainstream political activists thought bought into your claims of an inevitable landslide, and yet the results speak for themselves. Donald Trump, a, thir a vengeful third-party candidate, after the tape, after relentless attacks, never holding public office, running one of the most attack campaigns in recent memory, violating every moral norm will become the next president of the United States. And comfortably, too. Even you hardly thought it was real, being in some sort of daze for most of the evening. And when it was called, you just sat there for a little while. But now you're getting up, gritting. Galley and Conway holds a hand up. She'd prefer that you wait to be called with your opponent's concessions. Not likely. Not likely, you say. We're ready to speak. It's over. Who knows what your administration will look like? Republicans still have control, full control over the government, despite a handful of representatives, and even a, re a senator, Jill Miller of Alaska, being loyal to you, rendering your, the ca your cabinet to be mostly at their whims. You'll need to be a, ja a deaf negotiator to get your planned cabinet of your children, Michael Flynn, and others across the line. And remember, you had a deal in regards to Russia, one that they didn't expect them would be able to complete. After that, your, your agenda is up to you. An Obamacare repeal, an infrastructure deal, negotiating NAFTA, it's all up to you. But it'll be difficult with the Congress, they're united in their distaste for you. One hopes that Republicans will find it pos possible to tolerate you to advance their agenda. In addition, you'll likely be able to replace an, uh, a, appoint a replacement to Scalia instead of Merrick Garland. Even if you're a successful term, your path to re-election is murky. Will you run in the Republican primary again in four years? Run as an independent, start a third party? It's really up to you. But if you don't deliver the million to vote for you, it seems like lightning won't strike twice. Twice. Good luck, Mr. President. Alright, so whoa, New Mexico went to Rubio instead, but barely. 
it has to be the closest race, right? Uh, let me see if this is the closest race. Yep, it is. Oh my, 250 votes separated the two. Wow. And and of course, the best our best performance was in Wyoming. Highest Trump percentage was in Wyoming. In spite of being a narrow victory. West Virginia, however, uh, yeah, wasn't close at all. So anyways, uh, yep, that's all I have to say. Uh, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time, and uh, take it easy. Peace.